Hey guys, my name is Melanie Ludi and welcome back to my channel. So this week we're going to talk about the science PSSA and what I wish I knew before I had that first test. Before we get really started though, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you stay updated with all of my latest videos. Also consider hitting that like button, it really does help my channel. So first, what is the science PSSA and which one am I talking about? The PSSA is basically a benchmark test for our kids to make sure they have the science content they need. And we take PSSAs in third through eighth grade and then after eighth grade, there are keystone exams for certain subjects like algebra one and biology and things like that. So I had this eighth grade science PSSA. That's my responsibility primarily. And my first year, I knew nothing about it. I didn't even think about it for a second because I hadn't taken it in 10, 20 years. I don't know. I hadn't taken it for a very long time and I wasn't used to teaching it. So my first year I spent like three months on invertebrates because I liked them and I thought they were really cool, but they had no basis for that test. So the first thing I wish I had known was the number of questions, what they're about, anything like that. Let's look at the PDE website. So this is the Pennsylvania Department of Education's website, and this is where they talk about their PSSA for science. This document talks about the test design. So the big thing is it tells you the number of multiple choice, and it tells you that some of those are like embedded questions that they're trying out, like the SAT used to do, like some of the questions don't count because they're like testing them, same thing. And then there's open-ended questions. So they're actually graded on 38 of the multiple choice, but if you add all of this up, it ends up being 48. And then they have six open-ended, but they only grade five. This is the other main thing I wanted to know. How are questions divvied out? So like, where should I be focusing my time in seventh and eighth grade science? What do my kids really need to know? And the biggest surprise to me was that nature of science is 50% of that PSSA test. And nature and science includes basic scientific thinking like the scientific method, like measurement and metric system. A lot of those basic things that we weren't teaching and it was like, how, how are we doing that? We're not teaching half of the test. So that was a big thing I wish I had known earlier. And then this B, C and D. B is life science, C is physical science, and D is earth and space science. And those are just like a third, actually they're a sixth of the test because there's three areas and they split the remaining half of the questions on those three areas. Once I figured out that nature of science was 50% of the test and we weren't teaching it, I wanted to make sure I had covered all of those things that were gonna be on that test. And, PDE is super helpful and they give you the assessment anchors. Most of your state and local tests, they'll tell you what they are testing for, so you can find all that stuff. You just gotta dig around on your state's website. For Pennsylvania Science Grade 8, these were all of the assessment anchors and it talks about all of the things that are gonna be covered on this test or could be asked on this test. I'll show you later, some of these assessment anchors, they really don't ask questions about, but they have them on the assessment anchors. And I'll show you how I know that too. All of these for A, nature of science, and then we get into B, biology, C is physical, and D is earth and space, like I said. The next main thing I wish I had known is that there were released items. All right, so we're on the website, and then it has item and scoring samplers for the past about five years. So you can click on one of these, and then what it'll bring up is a PDF of questions that they use on that PSSA year, the answer, why it was that answer, how many students got it wrong or right, and what standard it correlates to based on the assessment anchors. It's quite fabulous, actually. So let's go here. So this is the first question. It gives you the exact answers. It tells you the answer was C. It tells you why the other answers were not, who, how many got the right answer, and it has the alignment on there. So through this, 
me and my instructional coach actually went through the last five years of PSSAs and we put all of these questions into a spreadsheet based on their alignment. Ends up looking like this. So this is every released item for the past five years for the science PSSA by its alignment. So it tells you the year, the question number, and what page it is. And then some of them say like open-ended or using information given on page 20, things like that. So if I open this one, is there one that has a passage? So this one, this is one of those like scenario based ones that they were talking about. They would have to read this passage and then answer questions 13 through 16 about it. All about the information they read in that passage. So those were those scenario based questions I talked about earlier. This is also the rubric that I mentioned earlier and this is how they grade the open ended. So the main thing is like thorough, partial or insufficient understanding. And really for a two, they're looking for clear, complete and correct. Like it's nothing rocket science, but it helps them know that there was a rubric that I could share with my kids and talk to them about so that they knew how to attack those open-ended questions. The next thing I wish I had known is how much stuff my scope and sequence wanted us to go over that was not going to be on that test. And that was a hard pill to swallow that my scope and sequence that I had been told was great and done by this fabulous teacher had a lot of gaps in it for what we needed to teach our kids. So I ended up redoing a whole scope and sequence based on my curriculum for the PSSA. Thank goodness my principal just kind of lets me do what he th what I think is best because that was a huge undertaking, but it definitely benefited me and I think the kids in the long run. I'm really hoping that this year's group does a lot better on the PSSA based on all those changes I've made. With COVID though, it'll be tough. Just how have kids learning changed and been affected by the whole quarantine? Were they doing all my work? It's a kind of difficult year to really base a lot of data on. The next thing I wish I had known is which content standards usually get skipped on the test. Looking at the screen here, A1.1 and 1.2, they have a lot of questions going on. Two, three, all of these. 3.3 though, there was only one question for 3.32 and there was no questions for 3.23, 3.31. And as we go through, like these don't have any questions. These don't have any questions. This whole standard here doesn't have questions. And if we go B3.3, explain how renewable and non-renewable resources provide for human needs or how these needs impact the environment. Like that's a whole lesson or unit that we could have skipped knowing that we're not going to talk about renewable and non-renewable resources. And the same goes in a bunch of these other areas. There's whole things that just get skipped. It was valuable to have all this data to know either what we should skip or, hey, what's probably going to show up as a question in the next year because they haven't touched on it in a while. Finally, the biggest thing I wish I had known about the test is that it's really about thinking scientifically and thinking logically. It's not really about the content. So a lot of the questions that you have on this science PSSA, you can figure it out based on the keywords and the clues in the question for the most part. You don't really need a ton of background knowledge. Let's look at a question quick. Biodiesel is an alternative fuel to traditional diesel. Both produce the same amount of energy. Which statement best compares biodiesel to traditional diesel? Like this, you just gotta look at the chart and you know match up the things that they're saying you don't have to know anything about biodiesel or traditional fuel here they give you the points you just got to be able to read the table and match it with one of the sentence statements there that's not really content knowledge at all that'll wrap up this video on what i wish i had known about the science psa i hope you enjoyed this video i'm gonna link that spreadsheet with all of the released items by alignment on it in the description below I'll put it on my Teachers Pay Teachers store, but it's gonna be free, so just go ahead and follow that link. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.
world's sleepiest little boy ever.